All right, what's up everyone? Dave here with another exciting tutorial. And today I want to talk about rigging in Blender, specifically rigging eyes. Okay, let's take a look here. If I move these controllers here, I can see that the monkey, Suzanne, eyes are looking around and following us wherever we go. Okay, now the other cool thing about this is that I do have control on each individual eye. So if I want to do like a cross eye thing, I could go like this and like that. And then I could still kind of grab the master control and kind of move it around. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, so again, that's kind of cool. The other neat, neat thing about this is that if I move this head, no matter where I move it, notice the eye controls still come along for the ride and it's still going to work. So I feel like this is essential skill if you're going to be creating characters is to be able to create an eye rig. In fact, what I like to do is I like to create the eye rig save it and then use it for kind of multiple characters, okay? So I'm gonna start by kind of creating a, a real simple eye and then I'm gonna kind of rig it up and then show you how to kind of connect it to characters like this. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm just gonna go file, new, general, okay? I'll hide the camera, don't really need that. And I can also get rid of this cube and now I have a default scene. So I'm gonna do shift A, mesh, UV sphere, and right now I can see that uh, it's kind of hard to tell, but I can see that the pole of the eye is sitting straight up. I want that to be kind of the iris and the pupil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it. So I'm going to press R for rotate, X to do it along the X axis, and then I'm going to type in 90. And now it's perfectly aligned um, facing this way. Now I need to color this. So I'm going to go over here and notice this is selected in object mode. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on this icon, the material properties. Click new, and I'm gonna call this white. And then I want to color this some more. So I'm gonna go over here to edit mode. So I'm gonna hit tab to enter edit mode. <clears throat> then I'm gonna select, I could press three on the number pad, or I'm sorry, on the regular numbers at the top. So this is one, two, and three. Then I'm gonna to go to my select circle, and I'm gonna select this right here. And I'm going to click on new and I'm going to call this black. Okay. And now I'm going to, of course, make that black. Okay. Now I'm, I don't see anything. I'm going to click assign. I might still not see anything until I go up here to uh, viewport shading. Aha. Now I see it. Now for the next one, I'm going to go to the select box. I'm going to select one of these faces and alt click near the edge. And you can see how it's selected all the way around. I'm going to create a new color. I'm going to call this blue and of course make this blue and hit assign. Okay, great. Now we got our eyeball that we can kind of work with and um, let's duplicate the eyeball because I feel like I'm not making a cyclops. So I'm going to press one and I see it facing us. I'm going to switch back to object mode and I'm going to do this. Control C, Control V and you can see it copied it. Then I'll press G for grab. And then I'll press X because I want it to go sideways. And then I'm going to press two because I want it to go two grid units over. Okay. Now, if I select this one, I could press G and then I could press X and then I could say negative two. And you can see it goes two units over that way. So I have them perfectly spaced, which is pretty cool. And now I'm going to name them. So since this is a character's right eye, I'm going to type this. I'm going to say eyeball underscore R. And then I'm going to do eyeball underscore L. Excellent. Um, now, I may be saying, well, hold on, Dave. This one's on the right side and this one's on the left. Well, according to us, but I feel like if we think about it from the perspective of the character, right? This is the character's right and the character's left. Okay, so I, we want to be mindful of that. So now if I press one on the number pad, I'm going to be, again, looking at it dead on. And I can see that my 3D cursor is at the center of the scene. So I can just press Shift A, go down to Armature, and it's going to create a bone right in the center. I can press S to scale that up. And notice that it was kind of weird to scale. If I have my arrow really close here, my scale isn't really going to work. I should have my scale way out here or my cursor way out here. Now if I press S, I have kind of a longer runway to work with. Okay, so now I can scale that up. And I can move it straight down like that. 
And if I go over here, I'm going to go to the bone. I'm going to call this head. Okay, excellent. Now I'm going to take this. I'm going to switch to edit mode. And I'm going to select this. I'm going to do shift D as in duplicate. And then I'm going to press G for grab and then X and then two. And I can see that it went perfectly where I needed it to. Okay. And now if I open this up, I can see here, here's the armature and I can see that there's the first one and here's the second bone. Okay. The second bone that I made, I'm going to name that I underscore R. Notice it's not named the same as that. That's why I named that one eyeball. I'm just calling this I, actually, I'm sorry, that would be L. Okay, so that's the I L bone. And it's important that we have an underscore L, okay, because when we symmetrize it, it's going to look for those kind of that standalone L, and it's going to replace that with an R and repeat that item on the other side. If it wasn't a standalone L, then it wouldn't know that it's it should be symmetrized. That'll make more sense when we get to that. But now I'm going to go ahead and look at this from the side. So I'm going to press three on the number pad. I'm also going to look at this in wireframe mode and I can see the bone right here. Now I can go ahead and rotate it and I'm going to go ahead and rotate it like this. And I'm going to move it forward. Okay. And then press S to scale it to make it a little bit smaller. And the most important thing here is, and I can even grab this end here. I want the end of this joint to be as close to the center as possible here. Okay. Uh, because that it's going to pivot around um, the center of this object. Um, so I, I want to make sure that that's set up. Now I just want to make sure that this one's as close to that line as possible. Okay, excellent. Now, if I look at this from the front, I can kind of see this. You know, does this look pretty even and centered? Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, excellent. Now I'll go ahead and back to texture mode and I can kind of see that it looks like a joint is sticking out of the eye, which definitely looks a little painful, but I feel like um, that's okay. So now I can select this, shift select this bone in edit mode, and I'm gonna do control P and say, keep offset. And what that's going to do, it's going to parent it. And you'll notice that there's this dotted line here. So that means that if this moves, this will come along for the ride. Okay. Now you'll notice that if I move it now, um, it's not really coming along for the ride. That's because I'm still in edit mode. As soon as I go to pose mode, now if I move this, I can see that it, it's coming along for the ride. Okay. I just wanted to point that out. I don't really necessarily want you to um, move it right now. I feel like we're not really ready to do that, but I just wanted to kind of point that out. So let's continue this process. If I select this joint, I want to um, I want to make the eye aim. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at it from the side. Press three on the number pad, and then I will do Shift D to duplicate press Y, and then I could just kind of move it forward like this. And you'll notice that it looks like it's still parented uh, because that um, when I duplicated it, it duplicated that parent constraint. Now I could just press S to scale it. I'm just going to make that a little bit smaller. Okay, excellent. Now I'll bring this back and I can see that that's directly in front of that. If I move that, this is going to aim towards it. Not yet, but I feel like it will. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to select this joint and I'm going to name it um, I aim underscore L. Okay, I aim underscore L. Again, that L by itself is going to be very important so it knows when to um, symmetrize. And the other thing too is that I want to get all my constraints set up before I symmetrize it because I feel like it's going to... Um, the um, the actual constraint should work when it's brought over as well. So we don't have to kind of do double the work. All right. So now that we're, um, we have that kind of set up like that, what I want to do is I want to enter pose mode and set up my constraints. So if I set up pose mode, I'm going to go to this joint right here and I'm going to go to the bone constraints. I'll go right here and I'm going to say a damped 
track. Now, what's my target? My target's gonna be the armature. Okay, the armature, you can see armature up here. Then what bone do I care about? Well, the eye aim, okay? So now, if I click on this, again, I'm in pose mode, I can see that it will follow. Okay, it looks kind of weird right now, but it is working. Um, so that's good, that's exactly what I want. So now I wanna mirror this. So I'm gonna go into edit mode. I'm going to carefully select these two. I don't necessarily need to mirror this one because it's in the center. And then I'm gonna to go to armature, symmetrize. And because they had the underscore L, I can see that it understood that it should be the other side and it went through and it actually automatically named it for us. So if we go to the bone, I can see it says underscore R and underscore R. Okay, awesome. And I can see that this, whoop, it looks like it's not working, but I have to be in pose mode. Now, if I move this, I can see that yes, that one, that constraint is working as well. So now I need to make a, a master control because it's kind of not necessarily convenient to maybe grab both of these. Although I could, um, I want to grab a central one to control it. And by the way, I should point out, you can see that the eyes are not following the bones yet. That's to come. But I feel like let's just be patient and you'll see that about to happen. But I'm going to first set this up. So if I go to edit mode, I want the um, controller to be right in the center here. So I'm going to shift select both of these. And then I want to move my 3D cursor to the center right here. So to do that, shift S. And I'm going to say cursor to selected. Now I can see the 3D cursor is there. That means that if I create something, it's going to happen right here. So if I do shift A, it automatically created a joint. I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna call this master aim. Okay, awesome. Now I need to parent um, these to the master aim. Um, I can see that currently they're parented to that. But when I do this, so I'm gonna select both of these and I need to select these first then this last, notice I'm in edit mode. I'm gonna do control P, and I'm gonna say keep offset. Now we can see that these are parented actually to this thing. And again, I'm not gonna be able to tell if it worked until I enter pose mode. When I enter pose mode, now I can move it and I can see it's working, okay? The other thing that I need to do, again, to enter edit mode, I need to select this one and shift select this one, and I need to parent this to this. Notice that when I select things, the order that I select them is, is important, okay? So I have to select the parent last. Um, now, so in other words, I selected this one first, then that one second, then I can do control P, and I'm gonna say keep offset. Now what that means is that if I go to pose mode, I can select this, and it all comes along for the ride. Okay, excellent. We're almost done here. So what I need to do is I need to now connect the eyeballs to the rig itself. To do that, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to object mode and I'm gonna select object mode, then shift select the joints. Then I'm gonna to go to pose mode and shift select that joint and control P and I'm gonna say parent to bone, okay? Now, again, I'll do that again. So I start in object mode, start here, shift select this, because I wanna say I wanna kind of work with both of those type of things. Then if I go to pose, I'm gonna shift select this bone, control P, I'm gonna say parent to bone. There we go. And we are pretty much set up, ready to rock and roll. So if I'm in pose mode, I can go like this and I can see that my eyes are working, okay? If I select one, okay, that's cool. Select this one, cool. This one, cool. And this one, hey, that's cool. Excellent. Now, um, okay, great. So let's say if I have this and um, I, I could bring the monkey in. Okay, so I could just do this. I could go to object mode, shift A, mesh, monkey. And let's say this is my character and I can just press S and I could do that. Now, I, I feel like that's cheating. That's too easy, okay? What I want to do instead is I want to save these eyes kind of as an external um, file 
and then import it into a lot of different scenes. So I'm going to kind of talk about how to do that. Um, so I can see, again, it worked here. If I could go back to pose mode. Um, whoop. There we go. Now I can go like that. Excellent. And, and all I would have to do is parent this joint to the, the monkey. But before I do that, let's go ahead and I'm going to select the monkey and delete. And I'm just going to save this as kind of like my master eyes. Okay, so I'm going to go like this, file, save as, and you can see that I have this under uh, lessons rigging. I'm going to call this like um, master eye rig. And I'm going to click save as. Okay, cool. So now you could think of it as I have this saved and for any character in the future, I can always use it. So let's say if I had a new scene and let's say in this scene, I had a character and that character is good old monkey, Suzanne. Okay. Well, great. Here's my character. Now let me import the eyes into here and see how that works. So to do that, I'm going to go to file and I'm going to say append. Okay. Now when I append, I'm going to go find the file. So lesson blender lessons uh, rigging. And I can see here is the master I rig append. And then it's going to give me a bunch of folders. I'm going to be like, what the heck is all this nonsense? I'm just going to go into object here and I'm going to select using control. I'm going to select the eyeballs are important. And so is the armature. So in other words, this is kind of like the geometry and this is the rig. And now if I hit append, I can see that came in. Now I feel like it's always smartest if you have the option to scale the geometry because there's less that can go wrong. Okay, so I'm gonna just scale up the monkey to fit the eyes. Again, maybe turn on this. And um, so now you can see how to kind of bring that into any character that you might need, right? Um, and I'm gonna just, so it's easier to see, I'm gonna just give this monkey some color. So I'm gonna go here, new, I'm gonna call this brown. And if I don't want it to be so shiny, I'm just gonna come down here and do specular down. That is not a good brown. Okay, there we go. And if I want this to be smoother, I'm just going to go in here to the modifier and add a subdivision modifier. Okay, there we go. So you can start to see that I've got um, something going on here. Now, if I move the monkey's head right now, nothing is going to come along for the ride. So what I'm going to do is be in object mode. I'm going to select this head control, shift select the monkey, control P, and I'm going to say set parent to object. Now what happens is that if I select the monkey's head, I can bring this up and no matter where the monkey's head goes, the, the eyes along with the eye rig comes along for the ride. Okay. The other thing that's cool about this is that if I, you know, I could have this at an obscure angle, I just switch to um, pose mode and to do that, I have to click on this. Then I can go to pose mode. I can select this and at any given time, I could just press G. I could start rotating this around and have the monkey look, even if it's just posing for a cool render. And, if, and let's not forget, I've got still independent control on the eyes, one at a time if I needed to. But if I wanted to keep them exactly the same, I could uh, just move this. Okay, so hopefully you found that helpful and um, you can kind of see how you can import that you know, into your other scenes. Don't forget, I have that master I saved, and I could import that kind of into unlimited scenes. Yeah, and granted, you might not, you might need to change um, things up slightly, um, but you could make like, think about it. If you made like a zombie eye, you made a realistic human eye, you made a cartoon eye, maybe you made some type of animal eye or bloodshot eye, and you have those kind of as saved, then any scenario that you need an eye, boom, you pop in the rig, and you're all set. So. Again, hopefully you found this helpful. 
If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe for new videos every week. All right, guys. See you later.